Hello, Monica. Welcome to CMED's Reflection Series. It is such a privilege to have you here. Thank you for inviting me, Carolyn. I've always admired your work. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> excuse me, this is Dr. Monica Sharma. And in the last months, I have had the pleasure, the honor, the privilege of getting to know this marvelous woman. So I'm going to drill her now and grill her with some questions so you can get to know her a little bit like I do, because she's created a marvelous class. And it, it's an honor to sit at the feet at some people, and you're one of those. Monica, first of all, she is a physician and has been with the, you were with the United Nations for how long? Um, almost 25 years. And how did that months. happen? How did your history with the United Nations happen? You know, it was just a chance. I never planned that. And like so many wonderful phenomena in the world, I was planning to move on to the next assignment. I had worked in a place, the National Institute of Health and Family Welfare in India for seven years. And I felt, you know, I've learned a lot, given a lot. Mm -hmm. And I need to move. And then I was on a field trip with students I was supervising. I was supervising their master's thesis. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them stayed back to collect data. And he saw this ad and he took my CV and put it into their letterbox with the phone number. And I get called <laughs> for the interview. And I <laughs> said to myself today, when people ask me, how did you plan? What did you do? I didn't, Carol. But see, don't you think that's destiny in some regards? That's the difference between fate and destiny. Destiny is what happens and you follow it. Yes, and that destiny that you speak of is really energized by a very profound space within a human being. Mm -hmm. And I feel that, you know, I've always wanted to serve in different parts of the world, in, in my own, the country I was born. Uh, I wanted to serve, to, to create a kind of space for people to contribute as I do, co-create. To co-create. There I am, you know? And I feel destiny is also about unfolding self. Absolutely. And so, yes. And, and so when you joined the United Nations, what was your role there? I joined as a, a staff member in the health division. But after that, I, because of my work, I became the head of the health unit in India. And then again, because of the work I did, I became James Grant, who was our executive director of UNICEF. I became his child survival advisor globally. And it was such a privilege to work on behalf with of children. You did a lot of work on behalf of children. Isn't that correct? That is the beginning of what I did for the first, let's say, you know, about 12 years. And then I moved on to another institution, um, UNDP. And there I worked on HIV and AIDS. And I was the UNDP director for HIV and AIDS worldwide. And I learned so much, Carolyn, oh, doing I that. It. I learned about how we as human beings can address stigma and discrimination. Yes. I learned that when we unfold ourselves, our jobs are no longer a, a thing I have to do and accountability, though that too is important. Mm -hmm. But how can I make my job a calling for what I deeply care about? Right. And I think that that discovery, whether I was working at the UN or prior to that, is, is what, what matters a lot. I recall uh, doing a research project very early on with the Indian Council of Medical Research on malnutrition. Mm -hmm. And I recall generating data. And I remember saying, the data is generated by our field workers. I'd love them to write something about it. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time ever that they wrote an article and we put it together mm -hmm. and we put it together in a book and they were so proud. 12 years later, when we were working in the UN and some staff went down, they said that was the best moment they could express 
what they wanted to shift. Isn't that amazing? And from all of this, you then wrote a book. I wrote a book pretty much at, at the invitation of someone you and I care about and admire, Andrew Harvey. Yes. And one day he called me up and said, Monica, you should write. I said, you know, I, I have taught in medical school, but I'm not a classical researcher. I have done research. He said, no, 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 I'm not talking about academia. Just organize what you've done because yes. the tools that you've used will be valuable worldwide. It is applicable in income rich countries. It's applicable in not so rich countries. It's applicable to business. It's applicable in the to world of governments and governance Absolutely. and civil society. Yeah. And, and let's talk about that for a moment because it was from that that we then carved out this workshop. So uh, what I did before I wrote the book, Carolyn, uh, because people got to know about my work, they said, why don't you organize it as a, a training program, a learning in action program? So I created a 75 hour learning in action program. And through that, even more innovations and creative actions, innovations based on our essence, you know, what we care about. And it came about. And so the book includes over a hundred examples, both through the UN and outside the UN. And so we came about writing, you know, what does it mean to, to unfold who I am? How do I design for large scale change, for change locally and, and connected to, to issues that matter to me? And then um, who do I need to be? Who do so I need to be? That, organizing that book and you reading it um, and, and inviting me, we created this course based on your deep knowledge, call it wisdom, and, and mine, and, and that we crafted it together for a group of people who want to make a difference. Well, I think that in every person is, you know, people have jobs and then they have careers and then there's a calling, you know, and I think every person wants to sense, wants to, to ignite in them what their calling is, what their true potential is to change and make their life and the lives around others better, no matter how big or small that world is, which is where I think your teaching is so incredibly valuable to offer a course for individuals and how to be a game changer within the arena of their life, no matter what that life is. You've been a global player, but there's no difference. I mean, what is the law? The law is what's in one is in the whole. What applies to how you change a nation is the same to how you change yourself. Absolutely. You know, to me, Carolyn, you've, you've really articulated the essence of this work. It is, it is the fact that who I am matters while I work. Mm -hmm. and, and there are so many people in the tech industry, one of the industries that are flourishing really, or, or in the industries related to money matters. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who really deeply care. They may not be the ones making all the decisions. Mm -hmm. They may not know how to be that game changer, but somewhere, in the core of every human. I think we are almost primed to be part of our mother earth, to be part of the whole, like Rumi says, you know, each of us are unique in what we can do and who we are, and yet we are one. And it's and, a silly contradiction, but it's not. Oh, it's not a contradiction. And I'll tell you something else, Monica, the older I get, the more, and this is part of what I'm discovering are the jewels of aging. The older I get, the more I appreciate that there isn't a, anything that a human being does that contributes to everybody that is insignificant. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, when we're young, we want to do big and big and public things. 
but you don't get how how powerful your small acts of empowerment are toward others and how much they make a difference and if and honestly if if we had people write their autobiographies about the places along their life path that were really game changers it would actually come down to the majority would be small conversations they had with others things they read moments that they saw something it wouldn't always be these great tornadoes that hit in a, in a state and you want and watch your town get wiped out that's a once in a lifetime event if it happens to you at all most game changing events are really these small things that we we engage with that have enormous consequences and that's why i love this class because right. that, that is exactly the inspiration that you're going to ignite in everybody. Yeah, you know, Carolyn, um, the beauty of of what you're saying is I could I could have many, 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 many little acts of kindness that are vital and it's a scatter. But what the course does, it it brings the many, many acts I have done or do into an ecosystem of change yes. where there is a result I can see. Because actually I yearn to see that result yes. somewhere deep down, a result of related to the joy of life itself, mm -hmm. uh, a result related to the bliss of oneness, you know? And it sounds philosophical, but it's not. Who doesn't want to be joyful here <laughs> and now? And Tr really, truly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I use the word small and strategic mm -hmm. because the core of this is to connect who I am to a way of being that connects who I am to how I think and can change the game and what I do in everyday life. That, so it is an everyday practice. It is a, there is a learning required how I design or connect this because we all are actually architects of our own lives, to use another word. Yes, yes. we are indeed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with our audience the uh, six classes, how you've organized them. How with, we have organized. How, right, how we, how we have organized them. And the first class, the, the class is called The Greatest Calling, Becoming a Game Changer. And, uh, and I love that. And the first session uh, is becoming a game changer and what that means and what your inner capabilities are and what in identifying personal power, what is that? I mean, I, I love this because you'll go right on into the inside of yourself. And then the second session is realizing your full potential, um, which I, I think is like the holy grail of the inner quest. What is my fullest potential? And I actually have done it as a microcosm sometimes, Monica, I think that full potential is one of those little hidden things that is in everything. Like there's the fullest potential in a conversation and there's the fullest potential in what am I going to prepare for dinner? I can make it ordinary or I can bring out the fullest potential. I, I consider that an active agent. Mm -hmm. that I actually engage. Do I want to do this to my, my fullest potential or do I want to, you know, the, the next session is uh, training my voice, because I think in, you know, as we organize this, empowerment doesn't happen overnight. And uh, it, you need training, you need practice, you need to know how. The fourth session is embracing the complexity of power and recognizing the subtle expressions of power in life and how to respond to that. And, this, and session five is the choice to become a game changer. And session six is your personal micro and macro life. Doesn't that sound delicious? I know I enjoyed working this out with you, Carolyn. And my sense is many, many people will enjoy going through this because a lot of this is threading who I already am, yeah. threading it with how I think and making it explicit 
Because when I make things explicit, I can actually take my work to scale without having to think about it. You know, I contribute locally. I contribute in the moment where I am. But that, that creates a new field that influences global thinking. Absolutely. And I think, you know, every time a person connects the dot that even how they treat their backyard is an environmental decision of incredible consequences, they have become a game changer. They have, they have become someone other people might, when they walk by, look at their backyard and think, then how shall I treat my backyard? It's you, you, you've got to think of yourself as an active domino, that all the many, many things that you can change in the world by understanding that you are an active agent, a game changer. And I want to say something else to everybody else. In the creation of this class, Monica and I had several conversations and it was just so delicious to work with someone who said, what's your vision and, and how shall we do this? And how can we bring together all of this, these messages? And this was a, a incredibly well thought out, carefully crafted course from someone who has evolved her message of empowerment by actually being in the world and working to empower nations and individuals and causes. And I cannot tell you what a privilege it is to have you here. I, I just, there aren't words and that's it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep gushing. That's my last gush, but you know, I have just grown to love you dearly. So I am thrilled to be part of this course with you, thrilled. And so am I. It takes two to tango, Carolyn. Wow. And tango we will, my darling. Our course starts um, in a uh, second week in March, I believe. I think it's March April. 7th. April. April. Sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's right. We're in April now. So our first class is on the 4th of April. April 4th. Wow. Whew. Where have I been? April 4th. And um, all the information will be on our website, mace.com. And... I look forward to all of you joining us because it will be lovely. Thank you, my darling. Thank Is there anything you, you want to add before we, we close? This is exciting. <laughs> it is. It's very exciting. And I am, I am so thrilled that you have the time to fit it in because I know you're still teaching all over the world. So this is a really big deal. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. It's a privilege to work with you. Oh, the honor's mine. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you uh, in April, April 4th. Thank you. All my love to you.